and I think uh, I've taken up enough time here. Let's go ahead and see if Sierra is on the phone here. Sierra, are you there? I'm here. Hello. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Lisa? I'm just fine. I'm so glad you're here today. This is going to be a fun show, I think. I think so, too. How's the weather down there in Costa Rica? Um, raining on and off. It's it's the season. Yeah, it is. Same here in Florida. But but you know what? That's just as beautiful as sunshine if you look at it the right way, isn't it? Well, I, I am I am in the rainforest, and that's what makes it so green and beautiful here. <laughs> that's right. You just got to go ahead and accept that that's, that's part of the beauty. That's fantastic. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I do want to get to the, the, the fact that you've lost this, this, this huge amount of weight using this law of attraction, but I really do want to address the fact that you do live a really, really cool life, the kind of life that most people just uh, dream about living, and you've done this by basically following your own advice about how to create a really cool life. Why don't you go ahead and tell people about what you do? Okay, well, sure. Um, well, I... I started out, well, I've always had this basic attitude of knowing that I can have what I want and deciding on something and somehow getting it without knowing what I was doing, um, without, before the, the term law of attraction became so popular. And um, I, I went through this phase of not really knowing if there was a God, and, and my friend sent me to this spiritual advisor lady, and she really explained all of this to me and gave me some certain steps to do and take. And at the time, I wanted to move up to Northern California. I'm from California. And she had me make a list of everything I wanted in a house and what I wanted. And I said, okay, you know, I'm going to try this out. Show me the money. You know, let me see if this really works. And I get there, and I start, you know, looking at different houses, and nothing's looking right. And then I called this one, and he explains it to me and gives me the address. And I'm like, I almost fell off my chair. I was like, I know this is it. And I go, it's perfect. It has every single thing on my list. And this house is on Blessing Lane. And I just went, <laughs> okay, there's a God. You know, it was just one of those, those divine moments that you have in your life, you know, where you get the chills and you just know it's working. And, and from there, um, I just really consciously began creating and, and listening to my intuition and not listening to what other people told me I could do and couldn't do. Right. And, you know, ignoring, you know, you can't do that. And no one can do that, you know. And I was like, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And by doing that, you know, it, it, my path just really unfolded on top of each other. And, um, you know, this could become a long story. I'm going to try to make it short. But I, I went on this dolphin swim thing. And when I got in the water with them, I knew I was home. And I knew that was what I, I, I had to be a part of this. So I went home and I started making all these arrangements to do my own trips and, I ended up quitting my job and moving to Florida and running dolphin dolphin swims in the Bahamas and then, then making a trip to Costa Rica because Costa Rica had always called to me since I was young. And um, to make a, a long story short again, I ended up finding this incredible property that I didn't think I could afford, but, you know, magically it did. You know, I wrote all these things in my journal and everything just completely worked out and flowed into place because when you're – when you're following your intuition and following your path, things flow. Uh -huh. You know, you, it, it's not an upstream battle. It is, it is downstream when you're, when you're in tune with, with your intuition and following the, the signs and the messages that, that source, source energy or God, whatever you call it, is giving you because they're always giving you those messages. And the right. thing is, is to listen to them and follow them. So I ended up, you know, buying this 10 acres of property um, in the rainforest and the most biologically intense place on earth before I even got on, out on the ocean because when I came to visit here, it was, um, it was in October like it is now during Hurricane Mitch, and there was no getting out on the water. But I was so sure. I mean, all the signs were so there. I ended up getting this property without ever getting out on the water. Then I get out on the water and find groups of thousands of dolphins and almost year-round humpbacks, and, you know, it's just been this incredible unfolding and an incredible path because I did follow um, my intuition and the signs, and, and it, work, it, it works when you do that. It works. Yeah, I think that's the main key is that when you're, when you're flowing, you can feel that this is, this is right, and, and as you flow, things do just kind of – Oops, there it is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you can tell when you're not flowing because 
Because, because like things it. are difficult, and you're and you're fighting against things, and and it's a struggle and an uphill upstream battle. And it, life is doesn't have to be that way. Life life is meant to be fun. Yeah, yeah. But that's not what we're trained growing up, is it? It's something that we have to re rethink and and reexamine. Although Absolutely. You've always had a pretty good clue. Were you just naturally? Knowing this, or did you have some kind of a spiritual awakening? I mean, were you one of those lucky people who just got it from day one? Well, I didn't, you know, I was unconsciously doing it. And, you know, I would just like, there would be something I wanted, like my first car. I wanted this convertible Carmen gear. I wanted it. I knew it was mine. And I just, you know, worked on my parents, and I just knew that it was mine, and it just all worked out. My dad calls this, I vant, I buy. You know, he says, I have this attitude. If you, you want it, you buy it, whether you have the money or not. But it's really a lot more than that. It, it, it's a, it's a, a knowing that, that you can have it and that it's yours. Yeah. And, and, and the universe, all kinds of magical, incredible things happen so that you can have it when you believe it and allow it to happen. Yeah. And I know that some people who would be hearing, the, you know, both of us talking about this, and, and we both know what we're saying, but somebody who hasn't really experienced what that flow looks like, you know, they're still on the shore and they're maybe afraid of jumping into the, I don't know what it is that's keeping them, but it's so difficult to comprehend how easy this is, like I was saying in today's uh, little monologue thing. But it really is. Don't you find that you just rest into it? You don't try. You don't fight to get there. You just allow it to be well that it's true and you know a lot of people say oh you were so brave to move to another country you were so brave to quit your job but for me the people that are brave are the people that that stay in something that they're unhappy in i mean they're you know they're being a martyr and you know for me those people are brave that are willing to live a life that is not about joy and not about what they want to do for me i did what i had to do to to express myself and be happy and like I said, the people that are brave are the ones that are, are not happy and stay stuck where they are. Yeah. That, to me, is brave. It really is, because life is so much harder. And I'm not going to pretend that I'm in the flow 24-7, but I'm at least aware of when I'm in it and when I'm not. Well, yeah, and, you know, we're, we're, we're um, spiritual um, beings that, that are eternal. So you can't get it wrong. I mean, you'll never know everything. You're not meant to know everything. Then you're done. You might as well fly up to the sky and be done. You know, yeah. it's, it's all about learning and expanding and growing, and it's a process. And I go, you know, my life basically goes like this. I'm in bliss. Then something happens that, you know, we call a contrast. And you go, okay, what did I learn from that? What, what desires did that launch from me? Um, what do I need to do now? And then you, you, you go through a, another process of expanding, and then it yeah. starts all over again. You know, it's a process. We're, we're evolving eternal beings. So you, you right. can't get it wrong, and you'll never be done. <laughs> That's right. Sounds like you've been reading a little bit of Abraham. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into, into your incredible weight loss story, because you, even though you had this amazing life, you still uh, managed to gain a, a pretty solid num uh, number of pounds there, and lost it and kept it off so yeah um you know I've struggled with weight my whole life and it, it's always been a battle for me because you know it, it's really for me easy to manifest material things right. but when you start talking about your weight you're talking very personally about you and and you you can always go on a diet and lose the weight through sure sheer willpower but that will never last because you haven't dealt with the issues that, that cause you to eat. Exactly. So this time I just was like, okay, I'm dealing with this. You know, I'm going to get through all my reasons. I, you know, I made lists in my journal. And, you know, I talk about this in my book. You know, you have to be brutally honest with yourself. What are you gaining by being weight? Because you, there's obviously something that you get from it or you wouldn't be overweight. Exactly. There, there's you know? There's some greater benefit that benefits you more than 50% of your beingness or you wouldn't be hanging on to it, even if you're not necessarily conscious of the fact that you're doing that. Yeah, it, exactly. Like, for instance, in my book, I have this list, um, why I'm, over, you know, reasons that people stay overweight. I want to keep people at a distance. I don't have to do physical things. I have a fear of in intimacy. I have an excuse for people not to like me. People feel sorry for me. It's my mom, dad, brother, sister's mate's fault. 
Um, being fat fits my self-image. That's the way I've always been. That's the way I'll always be. Um, I eat instead of um, studying, cleaning, making that call, whatever. Um, eating to uh, cover up um, unresolved anger, depression. One of the things I did is I used to have a hard time expressing myself, and I wouldn't say what I wanted to say, and I'd keep it in. So then I'd eat to shove it down further. Right. You know, it, that that's a big one for a lot of people is using food to stuff down your emotions. Yeah. And and you really need to learn to get over that or, you know, like I said, you can go on a diet and lose the weight, but that it's going to come up later. So the real thing is to go through the, the emotional scale or whatever you've got to do and get to the point that you've dealt with your issues of why you eat, why you overeat. Right. And the list that you were just reeling off there, those are all, like you said, those are very common things that many, many, many people have. But if you if you pay attention to the energy of, I mean, just the way that you were saying, when you were saying those words, you weren't in the flow. You weren't feeling connected and, you know, you're not happy and grooving on life when you're thinking those kinds of things. So if you'd find that you're thinking these things and that these are your reasons, these are your benefits to having your weight on by, uh, by paying attention to instead what, how good it would feel to be otherwise, that's when you move into the flow. So that's right. what you must have done is you paid attention and then you moved into the preferable feeling. Yeah, you just really have to get to the point that it's more uncomfortable to be fat than than all your fears of not being fat. Right. You and know, you, you just really have to get yourself to the other side in order for it to really work on a long-term basis. Right. But we also, I think, should bring up the fact that this is only if you feel uncomfortable being heavy. Some people are perfectly happy being oh, being better. Absolutely. And they and need nice to stop caring about what other people think. Right. And Even and that's the biggest, you know, in, in all areas of your life, don't care what other people think. You know what's good for you. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, we've got a caller on the line. You want to take a call? Sure. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll get back into the conversation. Hold on a second. We've got 260 area code. Are you Oh, there, good. Mom? It's not my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hi. Are you there? Yes, hi. Hello. Hi. Um, I apologize. I probably only joined in to, to listening about, oh, the one one twenty Eastern time. So oh, that's I missed fun. the first part, so if I ask anything uh, that's already been discussed, <laughs> sorry. That's um, fine. That means it was divine intervention bringing you in because somebody else <laughs> missed it and needed to have it repeated. That's right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Why can't everybody be as positive as you? <laughs> oh, but they can. Oh, yeah. I know, but they aren't. <laughs> you well, the, good, the good news is you only have to worry about yourself. Why don't the yeah. two of you run for uh, uh, presidency and vice presidency in the next election, you know? Yeah, the, yeah, I think I'll leave the rainforest of Costa Rica to get into politics in the States. That sounds like it's on my path. <laughs> yeah, let's leave the ocean and the Gulf of Mexico to go play in Washington, D.C. There you go. Um, okay, well, uh, just uh, two quick things. Um, uh, two quick questions. First of all, um, I see where it says you, when I was reading, you've lost 170 pounds, Sienna? Uh, Sierra, yeah, that's correct. I'm sorry, Sierra. <clears throat> Gosh, what a beautiful name. And, Thank you. Um, I just wanted to know, as a fat lady, how did you, that obviously took a while, how did you, um, and I'm assuming you had weak moments, how were you able to persevere? That's what I've always find a problem with. I can always get on the horse and go yeehaw and ride for a couple of weeks, and then I fall off and I go, oh well, I think I'll go, you know, sit by the stream instead of getting back on the horse. So right, well, that's what I was just talking about about uh, using pure um, willpower. It doesn't work for very long, correct. and that's what you're talking about. You know, for two weeks you have that willpower, and I'm going to do it, but you haven't dealt with the the real issues of why you overeat. So, of course, once willpower runs out, you go back to the way you are. Right. So the, the thing is, is, to, is to change that, to, to find your issues and what you're dealing with and get yourself over the, that point of it, it's, it's better for you to be thin than, than to be fat. You have to find those issues and deal with them. Well, um, to be honest with you, when I got uh, Lisa's book, that really totally put me in a whole di different direction of, of thinking. And 
and it's it's made a huge difference, but still I find myself now and then, you know, in those weak moments where it's like, oh, you know, I want I want that, you know, I want that cheeseburger so bad I can't think of anything <laughs> else. So, um, and then you know what? I think if you want that cheeseburger so bad, I think you should eat it. Okay. Because one of the things is not to let yourself feel deprived. The thing is not to eat five cheeseburgers. Yeah, right. But thin, thin people eat cheeseburgers. They're still thin. Yeah. And if you eat that cheeseburger feeling guilty the whole time you're eating it and what it's doing to your body, it, it's, it's going to be worse. Okay. If you eat that cheeseburger, then love that cheeseburger every moment of it and tell yourself that it's nourishing your body. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, that's a good point. Let me interject here for just, just go a second. Go for it. As you're eating, if you say to yourself, remember, we're all energy beings, and this is just an, a piece of energy you're putting into your mouth. If you tell your body, if, nothing, if, if there's no nutrients in this, just let it pass through. Only that which nourishes my body stays in, and the rest of it just gets digested and passes right out. Right. And really, when you, when you have a craving for a cheeseburger, or that cheesecake, or whatever it is, you know, you should eat it because if you if you think about it for like three days, going God, I want to eat, you know that you're not doing yourself any good, and then you're just going to end up way overeating later. Yep, it's better just to eat it and get it over with, and get right back on with what you're doing than to than to worry about it and think about it and obsess about it. Yeah, you're right, and and also Lisa, what you just said makes a lot of sense. It, may, it reminded me of that book, um, The Secret. Messages of water. I might yep. have the title wrong, and it's true. Whenever you, whenever you, you know, put your, according to that book, whenever you send positive vibrations into anything, um, it, it works better for you. So you know, that's that's cool to be reminded that I'd kind of forgotten that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we all need to be reminded. I mean, one of the things we I talk about in the book, I'm sure Lisa, Lisa talks about this, is is your eating habits and how fast you eat and you know, just shoving food into your mouth. And I still have to stay really conscious and careful about that because otherwise, you know, you, you're not thinking and you just, and you put so much food in your mouth, then you look down and go, where did my food go? Yeah. You know, it, you, I, everybody I needs to be reminded all the time of these things. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, both of you. One, one other, if I can just ask one more quick question. This is really why I called. Again, I didn't hear the beginning, so if you touched up on this, but, I love the whole idea of tapping into spiritual energy to accomplish whatever. Can you, in a, in, you know, uh, touch upon what, if you could put in a sentence or two, what, how could you describe the, oh gosh, words don't fail me now, um, the spiritual realm or energy that, if, if you can be, you know, probably going to be hard to be specific, that you tapped into. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it did, and you are it. You are a physical extension of source energy. You are you are of that energy. You have it all inside you. What what people ha- what happens is people get totally disconnected from that stream, and you you need to um, connect to it again. You have everything you need inside you. You have your inner guidance system inside of you that will guide you every single step of the way if you listen. So it's not like you're looking for some outside spiritual source. Okay. You are your own spiritual source. Yeah, that's what Lisa says, too. So I Yeah, that's what I mean Lisa get along so well. <laughs> I know. It's amazing. When I saw Sierra's webpage, I was like, oh, my God, it's the same thing. <laughs> and the old way of thinking, I would have think, oh, my God, that bitch, she's my competitor. But no, no, this is great. Yeah, there's no competition. There's room for everybody. There's, there's exactly. success out there for everybody. Absolutely, and, and especially is, since it's it's validation for this message that it's not just me, it's not just her, and there are other people out there that I'm finding who do the same thing. Uh, let me answer your question real quick to my version of your answer, since yeah. we are you know the same person. <laughs> um, <laughs> what I do to help uh, connect with the whole spiritual thing is. I'll watch movies like like The Matrix or What the Bleep or The Celestine Prophecy, that type of thing. So that way you get a visual. You can actually see what the energy moving looks like. And if you can visualize, uh, bring what you're seeing in this movie into your own everyday life. If you 
watch as you walk into the kitchen. You know how when the kid wa- or when when Marley Matlin walks onto the basketball court and what the bleep she walks through this sort of energetic watery type wall. Well, see yourself walking into the kitchen that way and passing through this veil of I'm in a fantastic place now and only good can happen to me here. Or imagine that your body is this you know uh, undulating blob of energy that everything that that uh, crosses into it is there by your intent. Do you see what I mean? Uh, yes, because um, I, tr- I truly believe that exists, and 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 you're right. We, you know, um, seeing it means that it's not your imagination. It's just that you've allowed that to, you know, to perceive what's there and that you can't see. Right. I've heard other people say it's almost like the heat waves that you see coming off of cars yes, on a, in a exactly. parking lot. Exactly. And I love that image. That's so awesome. Thank you again. Yeah, it's, you know, I wish I could wear a bracelet or a necklace that I can look down and go, oh, yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> because uh, the day goes, huh? Lisa, put that on the product list, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I actually do that. I go to, you know, the bead store and find, you know, letter beads. I've got like six or seven different bracelets that I do. You just make it out of a little elastic band and a little plastic, you know. Oh, wow. It doesn't have to be expensive. And just put like one word on there, you know, something that reminds you of, of what you're trying to create. And that way it's always there and you've created it while you're creating it. Put your intent into it that this is a loving reminder to myself of who I really am and what I choose to be. Right. Wow. I, I might just have them tattooed on the back of my hand. <laughs> hey, there you go. Uh, there you go. <laughs> well, thank you so much. You go. You're welcome. Good luck to you. Just, thank you so much, and, and congratulations. That's just a, a huge, phenomenal accomplishment. I just want Thanks, to say sweetie. one last quick thing. You're welcome. The fact that the two of you are together on this just shows how, in my opinion, as opposed to being competitive, shows to me is the best proof of all that you are both in it for all the right reasons, and first and foremost, you care. And that is so rare and wonderful in this modern-day age. So congratulations to both of you, and thanks for the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm going to go so I can listen. Okay, great. <laughs> thanks. Oh, bye. We do have another caller. You want to take another call? Sure. It's your show. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Oh, wait. There they are. Okay, they moved on the switchboard. Okay, caller in the 631 area code. You there? Yes, hello. This is Alexandra, and Sierra knows me as Rock and Roll Goddess. Oh, honey! How are you? I'm fine. I just wanted to ask you a question. Do you have parrots in your home? Yes, I do. Well, my parrots here are screaming at your parrots because I heard your parrot call, and my parrots are going crazy right now. <laughs> Will you please tell your parrots not to make my parrot? Parrots scream while I'm on the radio. Uh, (laughs) It's been the whole time I've been sitting here, I was like, okay, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. That's so interesting. Well, there's our connection. I already felt it before. Yeah, me too. It sounds so great you called in. The Abe Abe Forum's here. Yay. Yay. I wanted to talk to you just briefly because I think the lady uh, mentioned this before um, about the the energy and the vibration of food, because you, you know that, uh, that uh, Abraham and Esther speak about this quite a bit. Um, I had lost, I had, was very ill with Lyme's disease for a very long time and had gained a tremendous amount of weight from that and then lost it all via an action journey and, you know, kind of have gained it back over, over a period of time and kind of wanted to focus more on, on the emotional journey and the energetic journey, um, and the woman had mentioned something about a cheeseburger, you know, so here I am kind of trying to get into the vibe of aligning with food in a different way, and I know that you um, kind of have focused a little bit more on on whole food living, and how, how, did, you, how did you work with um, those desires like to have, because I know you're a fun-loving girl, to have a couple of, you know, margaritas or a glass of wine and and still work that into your program, or were you kind of on hold with that until you had lost your weight? Well, yes and no. You know, it, it, the thing is is that you don't want to go on a diet. You want to change your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So if your lifestyle is going to include a few margaritas here and there, a couple shots of tequila like me, or, you know, whatever, <laughs> you should still do that in moderation so that you're training yourself how you're going to eat for the rest of your life. 
Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's, the, that's the thing about diets is you go on this strict program for however long it is, and then you get off and you're lost because now all of a sudden you're in the real world with the body you want and you don't know how to eat unless yeah. you stay on your diet. Mm-hmm. So really, I think it's much better to go slow and, and change your eating habits and your lifestyle as, as to how you're going to eat when, you, when you're thin than to, you know, go on a diet. If you want a margarita, go have one. But the thing is, you know, don't have 20 and then, you know, go on a big binge the next day. Yeah, you no, know, it, I, and I understand that. I've just really been trying to get into the energy of food. Uh, and and aligning and a lot of what you know what Abraham says and what you say too and I love your site by the way. Thank I've you. I swam with dolphins, so I know exactly what you're feeling. As yeah. Well, so um, I just you know that that was I really just wanted to call and say hi and and talk to you and hear your voice. It's and so I- super to hear your voice. <laughs> We write to each other on the forum. <laughs> I'll let you. I'll let you get back to the rest of the callers, but know okay. that I'm with you guys. Okay. All right. Thank you, rock and roll Perfect. goddess. Yeah. Thanks Bye. for calling. Bye. <laughs> well, cool. You got your own fan club. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's cool. Very neat. Very neat. Uh, well, before we do get any more callers, who knows if we're going to get another one? I want to get into the whole green tea thing. You. Uh, yeah. Uh, unless you, there's anything you want to bring up before the, that. Um, no, I mean I think that um, rock and roll goddess brought you know brought us into it perfectly. What I what I actually ate and what I actually did, and and what what I did when I when I started this time, um, like I said, I, I I made a really conscious decision that it was time to to lose the weight. And so besides my emotions and all those other things, I changed. I knew that I needed to find you know a lifetime program and and whatever it was that I needed to lose weight this time. So I wrote in my journal, Dear God, I need your help. It is time for me to lose weight. Please guide me to the right weight loss plan, methods, and products for me. I am divinely guided in this situation, and I know all I need to know now about what to do to lose weight quickly and safely. I cannot do this by myself, but God can and is creating miracles here and now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was my statement. Because when you ask, you shall receive. You know, we, the answers are always come when you ask. That's the clue. So I just, green tea, green tea, green tea kept coming up. And, you know, I searched on the Internet, and I, I knew that I didn't want, you know, some Lipton green tea. I wanted the real stuff from Japan. And I just, I just knew it was the right product for me. And I ordered it, and um, I drank it. And within four hours, I got my menstrual cycle, which, you know, when you're obese is very irregular. It actually had been irregular my whole life. Got it in within four hours. And since that day, I've gotten it, very, you know, every 26, 28 days. Since then, even while I was still obese. Uh-huh. And um, I just think that it, it is the number one for me and for everyone I've recommended it to. I haven't had anyone tell me it hasn't done anything. Um, that to lose weight, it, it you know it helps with metabolism. Um, it obviously helps with your cycle. I can't make scientific claims. I can only say what it did for me. Yeah. Um, but there's just something about Japanese green tea. I mean, you don't see fat Japanese people, you know. And and it's just for me has been a really a, a kind of a miracle product. Yeah, I actually tried it. I went to your site when we first uh, communicated. God, it was so long ago, it seems like. Uh, I ordered some of the tea, and it's, it tastes different, doesn't it? It's not like American green tea. It, it almost almost tastes like wheatgrass juice. Yeah, it, it can. It depends. Like, I also, in my tea, when I'm brewing it, I put in a handful of goji berries. Now, this is another incredible product. Um, goji berries is the fruit with the most nutritional content of any fruit in the world. Um, more than you know, it's got like twenty times more vitamin C than orange. It's just this this powerhouse thing. So I actually put those in my green tea in in the brew too, and it gives my tea like a sweet flavor and like a major, major, major nutritional boost. So you know, it just depends on what you like and what you want to do. Where do you get the the goji berries? Um, I got them online. You can find them on, on my blogs. You know, I've got I've got a, a link on there. You know, if you do a search for goji berries, they're there. I really recommend, obviously, the the organic good ones. Right. Um, but they're completely available online. And if you start doing research, Lisa, I think you'll be amazed at the nutritional value they have. Huh? And you spell that what G 
G-O-J-I? Yeah, G-O-J-I. Go G. Okay, for anybody who's listening without a pen, G-O-J. And plus, you'll be able to find it at Sierra's website. Um, let me see. I want to make sure that we cover everything because we've only got 13 minutes left here. Um, Going fast. Yeah, it is. It really is. Um, okay, so we covered the fact that you lost you lost 170 pounds total, right? And you went from, uh, you're, you're what, a size 5 now? Yeah, actually, I've got size 3 jeans on right now, babe. No way. <laughs> now, did, you, did you exercise or any of that kind of stuff, or did you just allow your body to just uh, fall into what it's supposed to be? Well, exercise is essential. And, um, you know, when I was super heavy, I obviously couldn't move around like I would like to. So you just, you start off really slow. And, you know, I hate um, concentrated exercise where, you you know, you're exercising. And, you know, I, I just, I get so bored and I watch the clock. So for me, it's much better to take a swim. Or when I used to live where there was racquetball courts, I loved to play racquetball or, you know, go for a walk, but actually do something besides just going, I am exercising right now, because to, for me, it just sucks, you know, it just, I, I get, I get bored, and, you know, you just want to do something else, and, and um, you know, so the thing is to really find a, an activity that you like, that's fun for you, or even sometimes I put on great rock and roll, whatever music, and I danced around here, and my, my macaws bobbed their heads, and we all danced together. And, you know, you do something fun. Right, exactly. I, well, I, I can see how swimming with dolphins would be incredible. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, aside from just the fact that you're swimming with dolphins, just think of the energy of it. From what I understand, dolphins have this amazing healing energy. And I realize that, you know, the vast majority of the people on the planet don't have access to dolphins outside their back door. Right. But, but you can still think about the energy of it, the whole healing while you're doing even basic uh, exercising, bring your spiritual energy into it and set your intent. Yeah, for sure. The thing is to find in everything, you know, what brings you joy and what makes you happy. And if you are suffering through that exercise video that you're watching and you're just hating it, you know, you might, I mean, I'm sure you're doing your body some good, but maybe you're not doing your soul, you know, whatever that good. You know, you want to you want to find something that that excites you and makes you happy and makes you feel like you're not actually exercising. <laughs> And also, again, with the intent, if you're exercising with the intent that I need to change my body, I don't like my body, by just putting so much energy into it, you're fighting against the improvement because you're focusing on this weight that you want to get rid of. Yeah, which is the basis of the law of attraction, you know. Exactly. You don't want to think about what you don't want. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a somewhat delicate question. Yeah, I know you weren't expecting this, so I apologize if this is a little touchy, but you're, you're over 40 now. You weighed 300 pounds, and now you're a size 3. How do you look naked? I mean, do you have all the skin and stuff like that? Do you have stretch marks? How did you deal with that? Yeah, a little bit. You know, I, I was really careful to drink a lot of water and to use a lot of lotions and potions. And sure, I mean, with that much skin, I, I do have some flappy stuff, and <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And, and, you know, it's something I think about if I want to, you know, get surgery, because I'm this real natural against doctors and hospitals yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And it's something I've gone through. And so, you know, where I'm at right now is, is trying to decide if I can just really be happy with how I am and that little slap, you know, if I wear tight jeans that flaps over because there's all that skin there or if, I, if I'm going to do it. And, and I'm kind of still in that, to tell you the truth, yeah. trying to decide what to do. The way that I look at that, because I'm, I'm kind of in the same situation where I'm like, I don't know if I really want to lose any more weight because then, you know, that stuff's even more noticeable. But on the other hand, if you look at this as your badge of honor, look what you've done. Yeah, well, that's definitely one way to look at it. Yeah, it's, it, well, like I've got a scar across my abdomen. and I had my gallbladder taken out while I was 17. This is back in the old days when they were using leeches and stuff, you know. Like, <laughs> it's this gigantic scar. Now, a lot of women wouldn't wear a two-piece bathing suit because, oh, my God, I've got this scar. Well, no, that's that's a story right there. I've got, I could tell people I was in a duel, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, it, you know, it goes back to not caring what other people think. If you want to wear a two-piece bathing suit, you go, girl. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, 
like I've said before, I live in an nudist resort, so you know, I'm naked in front of people like this, and and uh, I, I still look pretty doggone good compared to everyone else. Everyone, everyone's got their body, and everyone's got their story, and this is what we all look like. And as long as you don't buy into that frat boy mentality, that even Britney Spears is fat, for God's sake. <laughs> Is you that know? too much or what? I saw that the people are writing the next day that she's fat. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got a, a quick. We should all be so fat as Britney Spears is right now. She's got like no body fat on her whatsoever. Uh, I've got a, call, uh, a question from the chat room here. Somebody is asking about what do you think about uh, weight being a karmic thing? Um, I don't believe it. No? I don't I don't believe it. You know, you are in control of your life right now. Right. And no matter what you did in a past life, the really great news is you can change it right now. So yeah. as long as you keep holding on to, you know, it's from a past life and it's my mom's fault and it's the way I've raised you, you can never move from it. Yeah. But when you take responsibility for your life right now and go, I can change right now, you can. <laughs> you know, stop stop holding on to past life stuff and yeah. blame on everybody else, you know? Right. Totally. Yeah, I, 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 I would agree that, that yeah, it may be karmic. You may have, you know, that may be what brought you to where you are now, but that doesn't mean that you can't move forward. It, you absolutely. You know, and if you keep holding on to that and going, I'm fat because of what I did in my past life. You know, I made fun of, I made a fun of all the fat people in, in grade school and now it's getting back at me, you know? Yeah. You can hold on to all that stuff and, and you're going to stay fat, you know? And that could be actually, you know, nobody really knows until you, you know, cross over and do your transformation stuff what the true story is. So it could be that it's a past life thing. It could just be, you know, it, it could be one of many thousands of things. Uh, somebody's asking, I believe it's probably the same person saying, so that you don't believe that we choose certain body types before we get here. Maybe. I mean, maybe. You know, I don't, or maybe. And, and that's when you go, okay, I chose this big boned body type. And I love myself, you know, and I'm going to stop trying to change me and look like a model in the magazine. Right. You so know, you chose sure. whatever you chose, and then you, you, you're happy. Well, the way that I look at that, too, is that, you know, maybe, yes, you're right, maybe I did choose that, and maybe the reason that I, who, for most of my, uh, at least more than half of my life, was a size 5 and pretty comfortable with it, all of a sudden I'm gaining all this weight. Well, maybe the reason I did that is so that I am forced to explore. Uh, absolutely. And, it, and absolutely. Then, and then they call you forth to to <laughs> expand. Yeah, your your birds are yelling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but but yeah, the, the, I think you're probably doing the same thing as I am. I I would never have written this book. I I would never have really really gotten into this whole thing and really studied it and learned how to how to do this and then done this radio show to help other people who are doing the same thing and the same thing with you. Maybe the reason you gained all the weight is specifically to – I don't even think there's a maybe. I believe that that's what the point is, that that's yeah. what life's path. No, I, I agree with you, and that, that, that thought actually went through my mind that this was also that I can write a book or whatever and help other people. Yeah. You know, to be an example, because, you know, people get into their 40s and they, they think it's over. You know, I've been fat my whole life. There's no way I can change now. And I am a living example that in your early 40s, you can still do it. It's never, ever too late. Yeah. Well, now, how long did it take you to, to lose the, the whole amount? Like um, a year. You know, it came off really fast, Lisa, because, you know, with the green tea and um, I really eat a lot of um, raw foods, lots of fruits and vegetables. And I've actually always ate like that with the addition of, like, I've never been a sweets person. I've been like a pasta bread kind of yeah. person. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I just gave those things up. Um, and I, every now and then I still eat them. But now I don't even want them anymore because a lot of it, too, is about changing your, your cravings because your body does crave certain things when you eat a certain way. And when you change that, you stop craving those things. I don't, I don't have cravings for those things anymore. Because sometimes I want them, you know. But um, I think the more whole foods you can eat, the less processed, the less things out of a can, the less things that don't resemble what they once were at all, right. um, the better off you are always. I'm in absolute agreement with that. It's not that you have to diet and cut back your calories. It's what what kind of garbage are you putting into your body with the stuff you're getting off of the, the grocery store shelves? Look, I mean, if you read the ingredients labels, it, 
uh, the majority of it is chemicals that you don't even really know what they are. Yeah, no, for sure. And your body functions so much better. And I'll tell you, if you're eating raw foods, if you're eating fruits and vegetables, you can eat all day <laughs> and you're going to lose weight, you know, because you're not putting chemicals and all kinds of fat and processed stuff into your body. Yeah, it's just a natural way of being. It's what your body is, is, is crying out for. It's what makes your cells sing. <laughs> so, uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Wow, we've only got a few minutes left. We've got another question here. Uh, do you have any thoughts on anorexia? Is it the same dynamic but only reversed? Yeah, you know, I don't really know too much about anorexia. Um, thank God I never went there. And um, I, I, I really don't know. I, it, what, well, obviously what it is is a low self-image, you know, number one, and falling into that you have to be really skinny and falling into society's view of what you should be, yeah. and, and, and it becomes an illness. Yeah, yeah, and a control issue. It's, it's also a big control issue. This is the only thing in life I can control. And you have the same thing with overweight. I it, it's it's exactly. You can't tell me how skinny I have to be. Bite me. This is how big I am, and there's nothing you can do about it. And it's right. way too skinny. Plus, there's also that... That perception, I mean, I'm sure that you've looked in the mirror and seen yourself, even, even at a size three, I, I, I imagine you probably even still have days where you look in the mirror and go, I'm too fat. Yeah, 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 I do. I do, definitely. I, you know, more the skin than, than my actual size. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, if you're a size three, My skin's a size five and my body's a size three. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, okay, we're, we're down to two minutes. want to make sure we cover everything. Uh, your website is im-im-im.com. Right. So there's, you've also got a, a MySpace page with lots of cool stuff on it. Uh, again, uh, folks, I will put the link to these things on the shapeshiftingonline.com site after the show. But if you're looking at the Blog Talk Radio uh, page right now, there is a link to Sierra's uh, main website, where you can find the green tea that she recommends, and it's, it's very tasty. I enjoyed it myself. Um, let's see. Can you think of anything else that we've left out that you want to make sure we get in? Um, I think we've done a really good job, Lisa. And, you know, maybe we do need to write a book together. Like we were talking about, you know, some kind of commune here in Costa Rica or, yeah. or something. You know, I just we both really think the same way. Yeah. And um, I think it's great that we can come together to help others. Absolutely. I, I, I think we should just make this gigantic network because I'm finding more and more and more, mostly women, uh, who are discovering this. And it's just so cool to see that, you know, it's not just me. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, absolutely. I'm trying to convince the whole world, you did it too. Yeah, yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, and it, it is so important to have a community and support. Yep. You know, you, you really can't do this by yourself and – and you need, you know, constant reminders, constant reminders, whether it's the law of attraction or weight loss or whatever. You know, it, it's good to have things around you that, that remind you and, and a support system of people. It, it's really important to have that kind of community. Absolutely. Okay, well, we are now officially out of time, folks. Once again, Sierra Goodman. Uh, she, I'll leave the, the, the links at the shapeshiftingonline.com radio page. And thanks so much for listening. Thanks to the folks in the chat room and to our callers. And thank you, Sierra, for being part of the show today. I really appreciate you being here. Thanks. My pleasure. Thanks for asking me. All right. We'll talk soon.